It's no secret that auto shows have become a major marketing tool for the automaker over the years. But we've recently seen changes. For instance, which automakers will participate, the time of year they're held, and even exhibit size and design. Can auto shows remain relevant to both the consumer and the automakers? This year's first major auto show will soon open in Chicago. Chicago also happens to host the nation's largest show, so we talk to the people who manage it and representatives from two automakers who will exhibit in Chicago this year. We've always stayed focused on the consumer, and I think as you know, the auto show uh, kind of um, has ebbed and flowed over the years, that focus on the consumer has helped our show, um, as I said, stay consistent and stay strong. Do I think they, they're gonna morph and change? Yeah, just like anything in society. Auto shows are still an amazing way for the guest, the customer, to go and experience vehicles. Many people don't want to go to the dealership. That's fine. But they want the experience. They want the service experience. They want a delivery experience. They want to be able to understand the product. But they want to have all of their own freedom and time and space, take as much time as they want. And, and that is still, auto shows are amazing at that. It's especially amazing for somebody who doesn't know exactly what product they're looking for, and they can see multiple choices on their own accord on their own time. So I think there's a, 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 a very strong reason to continue on auto shows. Very early on when everything turned to digital and social media, um, people were talking, oh boy, here's, here comes the end of the auto show. And uh, we saw it as just an unbelievable opportunity. And um, if, you're a, if you're a CMO and you're not evaluating an auto show with a digital component to it, you're really missing out. Uh, or really not looking at the full picture because when you, when you take a look at what happens in a market when the show is here, we call it a digital lift. Everything just gets raised online. And all those hundreds of thousands of people who come to the show and every one of them have a smartphone and they're, they are uh, capturing content, taking photos and sharing them. The difference really is, is how are OEMs like us using the auto show to show the product. And it needs to be a, a much more of a consumer interaction piece versus where it used to just be come here to launch a product, make it a big announcement. And then what we've learned over COVID and, 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 and even prior to COVID was different customers on different products need a different way to, to experience product or to, to learn about products. And that's why launches and big media events are starting to change between some are an auto show, some are a private event, some are just with media, some are just with customers. And I think that's also been really good in the end for all of the industry. Um, you, you know, Bob, that we're, we're the only show that was able to keep going through the pandemic. And um, we had a show every year. We had it in 20 before everything went to hell in a handbasket. And then 21, we moved back a few months and kind of recalibrated our show into a summer show that was really a lot of fun. And then 22, we just had a smaller show. And we look back and we think, man, each show was different than the one preceding it. And so here we are, you know, I'll throw it over to Jen for 23. We're very excited to be reopening the North Hall and we'll go back to a two hall show and just a lot of emphasis on EVs. Jen, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, so, so moving forward, as Dave mentioned, we are thrilled because we're back to a two-hall show. So reopening the North Hall, uh, back to that that full show, which which feels really good. Uh, we also have brands that are returning to our show this year in, in 2023 that missed during the pandemic. So, um, you know, we're thrilled to welcome back some brands, Honda, Acura, Cadillac. Um, we're just, you know, we're thrilled to have them back in the show. And Chicago Drives Electric is a brand new indoor EV track. So that builds on a fall program, a test drive and educational event that we hosted out of our headquarters last fall. And we're actually taking that theme and education along with the indoor EV test drive, uh, test track into the Chicago Auto Show. So it's going to be a 100,000 square feet uh, track alone, uh, plus an educational area where we're going to be hosting panel discussions as well as Facebook Lives, um, Instagram Lives 
and stories. So just a great resource for people who are coming to the show, want to experience EVs, you know, might not be sure if an EV is the right fit for them. But again, just a great opportunity to come out and experience these vehicles. Uh, they'll be able to ride along with a product specialist, but also take test drives outdoors on city streets in, you know, internal combustion engine vehicles as well. So lots to experience. Um, we'll also have some hybrids as well to experience and plug-in hybrids. So really people can get a full range of what's available currently in the market, um, many of which they haven't been able to see anywhere with low inventory at dealerships. So just a great opportunity to come out and experience all that's new. Very important, and we expect to continue to be a big part of our shows going forward. There's been a lot of controversy about it. I think that's from the publicity side, but from a consumer standpoint, it's a great opportunity to go out there and see what's available, uh, unfettered, I call auto shows the petting zoo of auto shoppers, so they're very important.